American-built Boston bombers flown by French and Dutch pilots of the RAF sweep in over the Channel Coast bound for Nazi war plants in occupied Europe. Dramatic films of devastating low-level attacks upon the enemy's war industries. Aerial prelude to the coming Allied invasion by land. Philadelphia's Temple University, the International Labor Organization holds its first wartime session. Attending the conference are some 350 delegates and their advisors representing 40 nations. Prime purpose of the Congress, as expressed by the Honorable Walter Nash of New Zealand, new president of ILO, is to plan important policies dealing with post-war labor problems, to bring together representatives of labor, industry, and government for a frank exchange of views and for better understanding. Interpreters translate the proceedings into every language. Chinese delegates present listen in through earphones. World labor making a genuine effort to do its part to ensure the economic future of free people in a free world. Wartime Washington pauses to honor Frank Knox, Secretary of the United States Navy, to whom death came at the age of 70. Behind the flag-draped caisson march contingents from every branch of the armed forces. At Arlington National Cemetery, high-ranking officers stand at hushed attention as the nation pays its last salute. Impressive tribute to the man who helped build the United States Navy to its greatest strength in world history. Proving ground for the mammoth airplanes of the future. An ingenious wind tunnel designed to test propellers up to 30 feet in diameter. This one is 16 feet 8 inches and is powered by a 2200 horsepower motor. Man-made gales giving equipment the same grueling workout under conditions similar to those encountered in actual flight. Porous stones for soundproofing. Inside the control room, operators and engineers watch closely as the blades are subjected to a pulling force of 97 tons. Endurance tests cover hundreds of hours. Testing in the dark, they study exhaust flames, blade tips traveling a thousand feet per second. tunnel capable of whipping up all the violence of a hurricane, proving ground for the sky giants of tomorrow. At an Atlantic Coast shipyard, 40,000 people await the launching of the Navy's newest aircraft carrier, 13th vessel of her class to be built since Pearl Harbor. Christened the Bonham Richard, the namesake of one of America's oldest and greatest fighting ships slides down the ways. Her gallant predecessor was the flagship of Commodore John Paul Jones, father of the American Navy. Now a 27,000 ton nest for 80 warplanes, the Bonham Richard will soon be in action against the enemy.
General Douglas MacArthur and Admiral Chester Nimitz, having now achieved the first large-scale merging of their forces in the Central and South Pacific, focus their attention on Bougainville in the Solomon Islands. Here, 22,000 Japanese troops are cut off from further supplies. For today, these waters are dominated by a powerful Allied fleet. Coming in over Bougainville's Empress Augusta Bay, low-flying U.S. planes blast enemy positions. Bombs landing on Japs entrenched within a few yards of American forces occupying the beachhead. Over roads carved through rough jungle country, men of the crack 37th Division move inland. They go to reinforce units holding off Japanese efforts to regain control of the island's vital airfields. Major General Beitler calls for more tanks as the American force now takes the war to the enemy. Fighting against terrific natural obstacles, the Yankees have succeeded in getting their heavy equipment into action. Infantry men open up on snipers and catch one taking cover alongside the road. Hand grenades thrown by men who have thrown baseballs all their lives wipe out pillboxes. Some have to be scorched out with live flame. Five hundred Jap bodies are counted during one month of the engagement. And this is but one phase of U.S. action in the South Pacific. Here is how the engineers take over, planting dynamite to clear the way for new airfields. Native coral surfaces the landing strips. American machinery establishing another air base from which the forces of the United Nations are striking back at the Japanese in the South Pacific.